history through card breaks and the cards we love. My name is Jake T. O'Donnell. Today we're opening this pack of 1992 Fleer football cards. Collect Mark Rippin performance highlights. Wow, that's that's a, a real get there. Um, <laughs> Mark Rippin, the quarterback of the Redskins famously for at least one of their Super Bowls. Um, so we're, we're on the lookout for some interesting players. Obviously there's 17 cards in here. Um, as sort of the NFL's uh, playoffs move along here, we're going to open this pack from over 30 years ago and see what, if any, stars we can find. Um, so let's see what we get in this pack. Um, you may have noticed I had to, uh, the, be the uh, cover of the pack was, had definitely had some like price stickers on it, so I had to like, had to try to peel those off so that you could see that this was in fact a pack of 92 Fleer football cards. So let's see who we get. All right, I'm, I'm doing kind of a lousy job of opening this thing, but we'll see. <laughs> see what we get. All right, first card is um, a Hall of Fame wide receiver with the first card. Michael Irvin. There you go. Uh, that's a nice card to start things out here. Michael Irvin was the, the favorite target of, of Troy Aikman. Um, it was a, and the sort of three-headed monster of Troy Aikman, Emmett Smith at running back, Michael Urban as the number one receiver um, was just a pretty uh, difficult trio to contain at this point in the history in the NFL's history. The Cowboys win three out of four Super Bowls with Jimmy Johnson for two of the quarter two uh, sorry two of the Super Bowls. Um, one Barry Switzer was the head coach. They were the sort of bane of everyone's existence, especially in the NFC during that stretch. You know, it's great years for the 49ers as well. They had great teams. They had Montana and then Steve Young. But Michael Irvin was, Michael Irvin was a, a flashy number one receiver type guy and a, had a great long career in the NFL. Caught a lot of balls, caught a lot of, a lot of, you know, very fast, great hands, everything you want in a number one receiver was Michael Irvin. And he was a, you know, flashy guy, flashy personality. Uh, you kind of either loved him or hated him, but uh, that was uh, Michael Irvin, and that was the Cowboys in this sort of incredible era of theirs. So great, great start uh, to this to start off with Michael Irvin. So here we go. Tunch Ilkin. What an amazing name for a, a Steelers <laughs> offensive lineman. Uh, I can't say that I know a lot about Tunch, uh, but there there's Tunch for you. Great, great look on the... Uh, on that there for Tunch. All right, all right. there is Mervin Fernandez with the Raiders. Uh, he was a uh, wide receiver, apparently. Uh, I can't really say I know a lot about him. Here is Stephen McMichael with the Bears, the Bears. Uh, let's take a look at the back of these cards here. Um, there you see, you know, McMichael would have come in a little bit after the sort of great stretch that they had. 11 and a half sacks is you know, either that, you know, his rookie year. Um, so I wouldn't say that's his rookie year. So, that, uh, so I think this is only showing a few of his, uh, a few of the years of his career. I'm going to guess Stephen McMichael, and I, I don't know this for a fact, but based off of those numbers, he was in the NFL for a long time. Maybe very likely. Or so yeah, it says he was a free agent in 1981. Um, he probably did end up. Uh, he, he, I, I don't know if he was on the Bears in '86. People can can, can tell me. Uh, but uh, obviously, 11 and a half sacks in one year in 1988. That's a that's quite a year. Uh, that's quite a. Uh, uh, quite a, quite an accomplishment. Uh, safety Dennis Smith with the uh, the Broncos. You see the great orange crush uniforms of this era. This is sort of the the heyday, the great era for for uh, John Elway before he actually starts winning Super Bowls. Of course, Jay Schroeder, quarterback with the Raiders. Um, I don't know if this is necessarily the best era for the Raiders. I think they're pretty good. Maybe not the greatest. Um, next is Bill Moss with the Chiefs. I don't, again, I'm not sure this is the best era for the Chiefs. They do have Joe Montana at this point. His last two years, I think, were 92 and 93. Um, next up is James Lofton, who I'm not sure. I'm going to have to fact check and see if he is in the Hall of Fame. I'm not really, I, I don't know that he is. But James Lofton was a great wide receiver for years in the NFL, years with the Bills. I think maybe also some years with the Raiders. Um, can't really, can't really go wrong with uh, with James Lofton. Very fast and uh, just a spectacular, 
spectacular athlete and again, you know, a big target there for um, for uh, for Jim Kelly in his uh, yeah, there you go. So he did start with the Raiders actually. Um, uh, big target for um, for Jim Kelly. I think he was a returner as well. So yeah, there's James Lofton. It's good, good player. All right, gonna roll on here. There is Sean Jones of the Oilers. This is when they would still be in Houston at that point. Uh, there is Jeff Kemp with the Jets. The Jets are not in a great era in the late 80s, early 90s, uh, and that not great era would continue into the late 90s when they were finally actually good, when Bill Parcells was the coach and Vinny Testaverde was the quarterback. But uh, a lot of years of a lot of bad draft picks with the, the Jets, and I can't say I know a lot about Jeff Kemp. And here is John Hand. Um, here's, um, here's Michael Haynes. Who, I my recollection is that Michael Haynes was a, was a pretty great receiver, um, and as you see there, ninety one with the Falcons, uh, over a thousand yards receiving. It's hard for wide receivers to get into the Hall of Fame, honestly. But Mike Michael Haynes was, I think, uh, was I think was a, was a very good one. But neat. I mean, any guy that has over a thousand yards receiving is it's a pretty good one. All right, so here is a one of the Mark Rippon performance highlights cards. And uh, let's see on the back what performance we're talking about. The end of the beginning. Um, Washington State fans were treated to a full season. An experienced Mark Rippon. Um, so just like a lot of, I guess apparently they they really went at, went after it in this series of 92 Fleer with um, Mark Rippon career highlights. So there you go. Um, all right. There's Harold Green uh, running back with the Bengals. This would be... I think the sort of late Boomer Esiason era uh, with the with the Bengals. Here is Courtney Hall with the Chargers. Um, Chargers are in the Super Bowl a couple of years after this. There's Tony Stargell with the Jets. Again, not necessarily the greatest era for the Jets. And the next one, the last card in the pack, we kind of did fly through these, is I believe another Hall of Famer in Bruce Matthews. Um, Part of the family, uh, I believe he's Clay Matthews' uh, uh, uncle, and uh, who was with the Packers for many years, of course. Bruce Matthews was a an Iron Man. Um, I believe he like had the maybe still has the NFL record for the most career starts, career game appearances, everything. Um, great player, uh, Mr. Dependable. I think one of the greatest offensive linemen ever, Bruce Matthews. And, uh, and and he he continued the run with the when they moved to Tennessee they were the Tennessee Oilers for a few years and then they became the Titans he was part of all of that um, and uh, you know it's it's hard to measure always a, a great you know offensive lineman you see there that he was you know drafted in the first round in '83 I want to say he had probably close to a 20 year career um, you know you see. It's hard to measure, but like you see there, Matthew's effort helped the offensive line allow just 24 sacks and nearly 700 pass attempts um, as Houston's pass offense led the league and propelled the Oilers to their first AFC Central title. Of course, their quarterback at this point is Warren Moon, um, who is a great player, a great quarterback in and of himself. So, um, And then you kind of also see there that uh, the, the, um, the Oilers are playing the Patriots in this game in their old Pat Patriot uniform. So... Bruce Matthews, one of the great offensive linemen, for sure, of, of his era and of all time. But we're going to wrap up with Michael Irvin here. Um, so uh, uh, Hall of Famer, surefire Hall of Famer. We're going to double check on some of the other players to make sure that they were Hall of Famers as well. So that is going to do it for this edition of Waxback Wisdom. Tell us what you thought of this break. Uh, what's your favorite card we pulled today? Do you have a story about one of the players in this pack? Leave us a comment and let us know. We'd love to hear it. If you enjoyed this video, we invite you to give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our Waxpack Wisdom content. In the video description, you can find links to where you can follow Waxpack Wisdom on all social media channels. You'll also find a link to a list of our favorite nonprofits and charities. If you enjoyed this video, please consider a donation to one of those organizations. It would mean a lot to us. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time on Waxpack Wisdom. Take care.